The greatest heist film known to man is set in a high school in Thailand. It talks about the adverse effects of poverty on children, the illusion of choice under capitalism, the different cultures of the rich and poor, and maybe a little bit of Asian finger wagging at cheating as a concept. In 2017, Chalat Gem Gong was a hit throughout Asia. Most people would know it by its English title, Bad Genius, directed by Natawad Punpiria, who also did the writing with Tanida Hantawi Watana and Vasuton Tiaromna. I definitely did not say any of those right, but I couldn't find a guide online, so we are dealing with it. The premise was relatively simple, but the framing and cinematography carried the rest of the story through. It literally has the same intensity of focus on its subject matter, if not more, than Ocean's Eleven. The film itself is about scholarship student Lin Lada Nilte, better known as Lin, initially just teaching her friend Grace and ending up cheating for her once, out of pity. That is, before Grace ropes in her equally rich and stupid boyfriend Pat, and everything goes to shit. Overhead, there seems to be an interview of some kind where the characters are lying to someone somewhere about everything that's going on at the school. I'll spare you the rest of the summary, and I'll take this moment to tell you that despite how boring and simple this sounds, it's quite literally the most intense and personal high school movie ever made. Like, full offense to Euphoria and all other high school media and everything. So really, that's why I'm gonna be reviewing this about as spoiler-free as I possibly can. I can't, I can't promise that it will be completely spoiler free considering, hi, it's still me, but I'll make a genuine attempt out of it because I actually do want people to go and watch this movie instead of just trusting me this time. Like in the previous video, I will be putting up a link to a drive on my Patreon and Ko-fi for people to be able to download this, so if you want to support me and get all three seasons of Kipo and this movie, you can definitely get it for literally dirt cheap. So, let's have fun with this. Heists as a genre are rooted in the West, and this time I do mean the West. One of the first films considered to be a heist is uh, one called Armored Car Robbery, which came out as a silent film a little over 72 years ago. And since then, it's been the exact same beats with a little bit of writer's flair for creative liberty. It's a subgenre of crime film where the focus is on the crime and its perpetrators. You have the planning, the heist, and the aftermath. Usually, you have the authorities as the antagonists, and if the writers build it, there's also going to be some insight on our perpetrators' motives, lives, and the personalities on top of what skill they have to offer to achieve the overall goal. Heists aren't technically that unique considering the humanizing and moralizing the actions of criminal minds. Also having come out in the 50s, the first ever actual heist film, Asphalt Jungle, made it a point to properly give you the backstory and motivation of each thief involved in the heist. And, in a surprising twist, stories of masterful and noble vigilantism and outlawry are basically older than the written word and the film. You have characters like Robin Hood, Zorro, Arsene Lupin, Irene Adler, The Batman, there are probably a lot more out there that aren't from white authors, but I'm using the popular ones to get the point down. And my point is that criminals that are great at evading the authorities and succeeding in their crime isn't a new concept. The one thing that the heist subgenre pioneered is the intense focus on the act of theft and the popularization of the idea that great efforts and planning go into the act of stealing something and gaining nothing but success for it, which isn't really true in most cases. Jacob Geller has a great video on museum heists that I recommend, but really, theft is a lot simpler than you think it is, besties. Most theft is just a well-meant afterthought, like colonization or torrenting. But Bad Genius twists that and the genre's meaning so masterfully in the simplest possible way, by making it about the fear of failure under the weight of expectations. Very Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse, there's still great money to gain from the act of cheating, but the fact of the matter is that the boastful regaling in each successful heist does nothing but build up emotional tension between Lin, Vit, and Bank. Usually every heist ends on a high note, but no, not in this one. And actually there's that and one other interesting fact about this film. It doesn't count as a heist in the traditional sense until after Lin loses her scholarship in the first half. 
Up until then, this is just a thriller. The first exam with Bank and Tong turns the scene into a generic crime film, with Bank as our cattling detective and the proctor, Mr. Sokhan, being the cop. You still get the pressure knowing that having two sets of test papers makes this harder for Lin to earn the money she needs, but she pushes through without putting much thought into why she's doing the most, and that costs her. Then, the film becomes fully entrenched in heist genre territory when we get to the aesthetic. And it's this transition and escalation of genre that turns good to great because as the characters develop, the further in they go with the ruse, the tension keeps building. I know a bunch of people who have cheated in exams and quizzes before and I've gone to private schools for most of my life. Note, Filipino private schooling is not equal to Western private schooling. We are not the same. A lot of these kids cheat on their exams because of the needless stress of having to cram gives them. Because tuition fees are too expensive to be failing in a prestigious institution. Because they want to give their families a better life, but they don't have the skill needed to do it. Because, and I'm just gonna lay it out for everyone out there, you're not gonna need this information moving forward anyway. A lot of my classmates used to say that cheating is what unites us all. On exams, that is. A lot of my classmates were also a little sleazy, so... A few of them actually met the other way too. Between Lynn, Grace, Pat, and Bank, that actually holds a kernel of truth. Different backgrounds, different motivations, one common goal. Lynn wants to ease the burden for Bit, who has a difficult time being a single dad and it just gets worse when she gets suspended. Grace is nice, a bit ditzy, and initially actually did want to learn until Lynn gave her the easy answers out of pity. So I feel like the pity part was a result of manipulation, but that, that could just be me. Okay, Pat is arguably the weakest character of the bunch, and that actually works in his favor. He's the heir to be and is used to getting what he wants, forced or not, and throughout the film, none of that changes. Bank wanted nothing of this. And actually, his little deterioration arc is so fascinating, because up until the Estic, he was practically a model poor person. His mother runs a laundromat with faulty washing machines, so sometimes he has to help her hand wash batches instead of making time for himself. He refuses to cheat only because of his principles. Well, used to. Our narrative character is Lynn, as per heist tradition. She's the mastermind of every single heist, even if she wasn't the one to gather the entire team for the Estic. That courtesy goes to Pat, who funds the operations with Grace, and they're basically nothing but parasites. Speaking of parasites, that's another heist film that got international acclaim, was a good commentary on poverty, bent genres to its will, and came out of Asia. Kissing Chung, better known as Parasite, was written and directed by Bong Juno and came out in 2019. Don't think I should have to summarize what happened there considering how successful that one is, but for the sake of the format, it's about the King family long conning the richer Park family into hiring them all on to work in their house. Once they're successful in seeding themselves into job stability, a surprise awaits them that turns this heist into a horror film. Parasite and Bad Genius are not equal, of course, in that they have completely different premises and different ideas to represent. Though they both have commentaries on capitalism, income inequality, and economic mobility in their respective countries, one is very specifically about the breaking down of interpersonal morals, while the other focuses on the moral of the self. The Kim family, a little less poor than Oh Gunsei and Guk Meng Guang were more willing to sabotage them even though Meng Guang literally lived in the basement of Miss O's workplace. They were willing to let this couple die just so they wouldn't go back to living in their job-to-job half-basement home. On the other hand, Lin and Bank's reservation were whittled down even just at the chance at a chance of an easier life. And who could blame them? Their children, of course they want an easier life for their family and for themselves. And why shouldn't they? Why shouldn't they put their morals aside in order to survive? Yeah, sure, it'll make you feel bad, but why does it? Who taught you those attitudes? that fairness should be present in everyone despite how everyone is on unequal ground. Who taught us that it's a doggy dog world out there? The major difference between Parasite and Bad Genius's poor characters is that in Parasite, they were all inevitably corrupted by the idea of wealth through victory. To put it plainly, these people have 
become nearly monstrous in their desire to maintain their survival. Bad geniuses' characters are still rooted in their morals and humanity. The film makes it a point to punish Lynn for wanting an easier life. Vit got divorced a long time ago and is forcing her to go to a prestigious school on a teacher's salary. They have a car that barely works, but she's forced to commute in order to go to this school. The school gives her a free education only after she haggled, but her father still has to pay for school maintenance fees despite Lynn literally attending contests in the school's name and raising their reputation. She wins a lot of them. <sighs> when she succeeds in helping every single one of her clients after the second exam, she's immediately busted and none of her supposed clients get the consequences. She also never thought to snitch just like they never thought to confess. Dong demonstrates this by having zero lines in the scene. Bank, being the one person who reported this and only did it out of concern for her, feels guilty for her. But neither Pat nor Grace nor any of her clients do. Because unlike these rich pricks, he understands. When Dong offered him the 3,000 baht before the exam, he hesitated. He knows why Lin would be desperate to take the chance. The truth of the matter is that grinding to survive isn't human nature. We were meant to help each other. That's why turning a blind eye or tearing down someone who needs help feels so wrong. That's why everyone's kindness and fairness is worn down to nubs before they're forced to do the one thing they don't want to do. And it's difficult to leave that alien mindset of crab mentality the act of dragging each other down to get out of a dire situation. It's hard to get out of that once you're in it. Who even puts in the bucket anyway? Why, why do we have to? Why do we have to drag each other down to get out? Meanwhile, those in power stay ignorant of this crisis. If they're aware, they offer petty sentiments. A few of them even are still in that crab mentality mindset. The illusion of economic mobility and the trauma of poverty go hand in hand, etc. etc. Pat and Grace barely pause to think about what their expectations could be doing to Lynn and Bank. All they care about is themselves and their opportunities. They think that consent is equal to open enthusiasm and agreement. Pat more than Grace, really, even though it seems like all Grace can offer is her useless pity in the face of a career and a well-off future with Pat. And this is a level of analysis you're getting from a two-hour heist film about students cheating on a test. I am telling you, watching this film is worth every held breath. To give you a broader sense of the facts here and why these children are so fleshed out, it is because they had four to five people going over the script over the span of two years before they even began production. Bunbri and Co. weren't under pressure to finish production. They were put under pressure to buff this story into shiny. And it paid off. This film looks, sounds, and feels amazing to just witness. This isn't the last bit. It's, it's part of the structure. You get it. Since local release, Bad Genius has been nothing but phenomenal. It even did well in Chinese theaters unedited, which allegedly is rare for Thai films. Once it was distributed to the West, it did even better, so it's no surprise that it had remakes. Nothing quite as robust as the remakes that were done of Lee Wan Kyung's The Bon Bang Yi Sun Mui, better known as South Korea's 2013 hit Miracle in Cell No. 7, or Oh Ba Tsugumi's Death Note, but this is a colossal hit and it's a film from Southeast Asia. Distributor GDH559 greenlit the act to remake the movie into a series with the same characters with a different cast and crew, even so far as authorizing a novelization of the film. Bad Genius the series is also a marked success, which is rare for a film to series adaptation. I think the only successful media I've seen do that are Tangled, Lilo and Stitch, and Star Wars. And it isn't such a big shock that they were this successful. What is a big shock is how easily this slipped out of mainstream consciousness. I watched this when it was still a big hit in 2017. I saw posters in the mall for in-theater viewing. Everyone I knew liked it, and it left such a big mark on my circle of friends. Months ago, we rewatched this film in the Reverse AU Discord server, and surprisingly enough, not a lot of people have seen or heard of this film. This film came out four years ago, and it did so well, it was one of the highest grossing films to have come out of Southeast Asia. But despite that, I had a difficult time finding interviews with cast and crew. I could barely even look up pronunciation guides for these wonderful people's names. That's the only reason I couldn't include the names for the director photography or any of the actors really. What few things I could find were from the series, not the movie. I don't know, I just feel like what could have easily been a timeless classic faded out of public consciousness and I don't even know where to start to find out why. I know I keep saying this a lot but like this time I do mean it. 
I will cover this in a future video. It's, it's, it's on the queue. If, if you were a patron or a member, you would know. Bad Genius is one of the greatest films of all time. The writing is amazing, the cinematography is crisp, the editing, the music choice, that everything about it should mean it should still have a, as many echoes in the public consciousness as Parasite does. So here's me throwing my hat into the ring and making the effort. There's a lot about the characters I can touch on without getting too long-winded or needing a pronunciation guide that doesn't exist. There's the tension between Lynn, Grace, and Bank that my friends are sure is bisexuality. And then there's the very blatant criticism of private school systems and the over-reliance on international scholarships in Southeast Asia. But I'm satisfied with what I've been able to surmise here, and hopefully that means everyone watching will want to watch the film as well. Or rewatch it. Like the movie if you want. If you've watched the film, tell me what you liked about it the most. If you haven't, tell me if I was successful in convincing you to watch it. Subscribe for more self-indulgence like this or whatever. All my love goes out to Jet, Evie, and all my patrons. If you want early access to videos, voting rights to what comes out next, bloopers, and more, be sure to support me via Patreon or Ko-fi. Thanks for getting to the end of the video. Stay safe. Ingat tayong lahat. Bye!